shipping is really efficient. Sure not as fast as air cargo but definitely way cheaper. The price to send the container ranges from 12 to 16 times cheaper than air cargo. If sends a package by air it costs on average anywhere from $1.50 a kilo to $4.50 per kilogram. To make sure that shipping is cost efficient there are tricks that the shipping companies figured out over the years to make the process of loading and unloading the ship easier and quicker. Also, to make sure that the cargo on board anything from seafood to fragile glass to everyday items are transported with care and are safe on their journey. Doing anything as complex as loading a cargo ship requires a plan. That's why a stowage plan is created with the central planner who are in the company's headquarters. They get to decide where the containers go on the ship. The plan looks something like this. Or some it may look a bit like Tetris except this is millions of dollars of cargo. Although the general storage plan does vary greatly from ship to ship, there are a couple of key things that planners must do and priorities to keep in mind when planning for a given ship. One of these priorities is safety. This is safety for the ship, the crew on board and the cargo. For starters, one wants to ship to stay upright for obvious reasons so the heaviest containers go on the bottom of the ship to increase stability. Containers are to be stacked from bottom up even if they are above deck as this extra space is not desired. There are limits on how high you can stack containers because the crew on the bridge must be able to see what's ahead of them. Each stack or bay as they call it and shipping has a limit on how much weight you can have this is to avoid damage to the ship. The planners also have to take account for 20 foot and 40 foot containers. A sinkhole 20 foot container is not allowed under a 40 foot container for obvious reasons. A 40 foot container can be placed on top to 20 foot containers. The flammable cargo is and should be placed away from the edge of the ship. This is if the ship is traveling through pirate infested waters like waters in and around Somalia, Gulf of Aden, Malacca Strait South China Sea Gulf of Guinea, and many more. The cargo will be tucked away, away from the RPGs that the pirates have and could light the containers on fire. Second, one must place containers based on what they need. For example, the refrigerated containers or short for reefer needs to be close to power outlets so they can properly cool their cargo because reefers carry stuff like frozen meat and fresh fruits like bananas, which can go back very quickly if they're not cooled properly. The dry containers carry everyday items that can be placed largely anywhere depending on its weight and other restrictions. The final importance is placed on where the container is going. Say, that this ship is going from Hong Kong to then Singapore then to Gibraltar and then Rotterdam. When the ship starts to take on cargo in Hong Kong the containers that are going to the furthest port that is Rotterdam is placed on the bottom of the ship as it is the last stop. If a container is misplaced, like the container that was going to Rotterdam is on top of the container the going to Singapore the crane would have to take the Rotterdam container off then put the Singapore one on again then after, put the container going to water down back on. This is called double handling and is not wanted as waste time for shipping companies and port authorities. The ship planner uses computers and software to plan and put the right containers in the right place. Double handling does not happen often but is important to keep an eye out for. The stowage plan is changed after the ship visits each port also to take account for what containers will be put on or off at the other ports. Once stowage plan is made it goes to the ship before anything happens. First the ship must make it to port before taking on any cargo. There are multiple checks that the crew must do I warn this gets technical. The bilge or the lowest part of the ship must be emptied of water or debris. This is to keep the ship buoyant while docking. The bilge alarm should be in working order there must be adequate lashing equipment on board and available to safely and secure the containers aboard. Also, the equipment should be in working order if it is not then there should be something done to replace the equipment. If there is any out of gauge cargo or any cargo that is larger than the dimensions of a container there should be pacific lashing equipment on board to secure it. For the reefers that will coming aboard there should be enough plugs to accommodate them and extra connections to maximize the number of reefers on board. The lighting on all decks and lashing bridges and catwalks which is not a fashion show kind of the catwalk but an elevate pathway on a ship kind of catwalk should be in working order. If a light is defective, it must be replaced. There also should be a proper ballast water management plan. This is a plan made to consider the environmental impacts of a ship's ballast water the balance tanks in a ship's hull are used to provide stability to a ship when loading and unloading also when sailing because this is a sea we're talking about here. Basically, there are two main ways how to keep ships upright when a ship is being loaded or unloaded with containers. The first way is to stack containers gradually from left to right or right to left and not to keep them all on one side. The next thing is to use anti-roll tanks or ballast tanks. This is an active system that works to push water around a ship to different tanks to keep it balanced while being loaded. 
Also say if a ship did not take a lot of cargo, it will take on more water to make sure that the ship stays stable in the high seas. Say, there are too many containers on one side of the ship like in this case, then more water can be pumped to the other side of the ship to compensate for that wave. Ships often take water off when they're coming into shallow water this is called deballasting. You can see this as the red paint is often below the waterline but in the port it is above. The problem is that non-native microorganisms plants for animal species couldn't be taken right on the ballast tanks from one place to another. This could introduce an invasive species to one ecosystem. Going through the ballast plan would be too complicated for one short YouTube video and could be a video on its own. But to summarize, the plan must describe how it will filter the water of the territorial waters of the country where the deballasting is in place. There is a link in the description to more details how the system on the ship works must comply with each country. But overall, there must be a treatment system on board that will kill the microbes before letting you off the water. After the checks and documents are filled, the ship arrives in port and the process of loading and loading begins. Giant cranes lift containers off the ship then put on cargo onto the ship. Trucks bring cargo to the crane to then lift it onto the ship. With the help of these guys containers are safely locked in place in the hall for workers help with lashing the containers that are placed on top of the deck to secure them for the journey as it is the port workers that help with the lashing of the containers and checking if they're secure. That is how one loads a container ship and unlocked one. The most remarkable part of the process is how little amount of time it took to get the containers off then on. Ships are mostly import for a maximum of 3 days as most visits to the port take much shorter than 3 days. This is all thanks to the ingenious idea of container shipping just as wonders for international trade and the reason why goods are so cheap and why products themselves are made in many different countries. No matter how far apart one is, we are in many ways connected because some guys decided long while ago to put a box in a box and then put it on a ship which can go and fit on a truck, boat, or train around the globe. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please show your appreciation by liking, sharing and subscribing to this channel. Also please check out my other content. Again, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.